before lunch is uh, Scott Barnett from Northwestern. And the title of this talk is Connecting Free Time Structure with SOE, SOFC Electric Performance. Thank you. 
and we see that at least on the LSM bridge side, we're beginning to match uh, the data. But interestingly, we see very good connectivity even to, uh, in the YSE phase down to very low uh, YSE amounts, okay? which we didn't see for the LSM phase, which is what's happening here. Uh, so then we looked actually at the uh, uh, torch velocity effects. Uh, and we found that torch velocity can actually affect what's going on over here. So it turns out that if you're at very low YSE contents, uh, not only is there a relatively limited pathway for ion, oxygen ion transport in the cathode, but uh, in addition, torch velocity can become quite high. And that's what's shown here as our measurements of the YSE phase torch velocity as a function of the composition here. You see as you go to lower and lower YSE, not only is there less YSE, but the pathways are more and more tortuous. So you can reach a point on this side where you can really begin to get some limitations in the transport of oxygen ions in the structure. So if we account for that, uh, in the, again, in the Tanner von Bierkart model, we get now a prediction that looks like this. And we're beginning to see now this increase in polarization resistance at the low YSE content. Although it's not, it's not a lot of green exactly, but at least it's giving a pretty reasonable sense uh, based on such a simple model uh, of being able to predict the polarization versus composition of these electrodes from the 3D structural information. And sort of a similar story for nickel YSE. Uh, uh, and again, we use the structure-based electrochemical model. You can see that uh, if you look at that measured polarization resistance as a fun function of composition, it actually does something very similar for the nickel YSE. You have an optimal somewhere at around 50 weight percent uh, nickel oxide, which actually turns out to be somewhere in the 35% or so range of, of nickel metal uh, when it's reduced. Uh, again, if you look just at total TPV density, you see something that doesn't really give you much of its variation. If you we included then, again, the connectivity effects, so include all, including only electrochemically active TPVs or EATPVs, and also the torch velocity effects, we begin to see, at least on the nickel pore side here, uh, uh, a prediction from the uh, model that, that more or less matches with what we're observing experimentally, but we don't see this in here, and this was actually one example uh, where the, uh, uh, we think maybe interfacial effects may be responsible. So again, we're looking only at uh, the middle of the active layer, we're not looking at the, as well, the interface, say, between the nickel Y and C and the Y and Z uh, electrolyte. And uh, so it may, there may be some actual effects of those interfaces. And in particular, if we look at the uh, actual images here, if we look at the very high nickel oxide content, look at those images, we see there's a tendency for there to be a lot of porosity and a lot of nickel at the interfaces. And so there's a real question, do you have a, a, a really uh, a much higher torch velocity right at this interface in the YSE phase, making it very difficult for oxygen ions in the electrode to uh, transport into the electrolyte. Okay, uh, in other studies, uh, this is work with Stu Adler. We've been looking at uh, lanthanum strontium cobaltite cathodes. So these are single phase mixed conducting cathodes on GDC. Uh, these are just different views. The green here is the cobaltite phase, black is the pore phase. Uh, I believe this is actually the, the pore microstructure, which is difficult to see. And this is a case where you can also actually fairly easily look at the interface between the GDC electrolyte and the green here is just showing the contact points uh, of this. LSC phase uh, onto the uh, uh, electrolyte. And this is still ongoing work, but the interesting point that came out of this is that uh, we were looking at some different samples that were fired at different temperatures, and, and in particular we looked at you know, ones ranging from about 950 to 1100 degrees centigrade. And those were ones in, in the electrochemical impedance studies, Stu was seeing quite a big change in the performance. And yet we actually see very little change uh, uh, in the actual structure of the the electrodes when they change the temperature. So uh, this is actually kind of a negative result in that we didn't see morphological changes, but it still provides you some information because you can see that the, the electrochemical changes must be due to something else that's going on. And one possibility is that perhaps at different firing temperatures you have different levels of segregation of the surface of the LSC that might be affecting the polarization rather than the uh, morphological effect. Uh, we've been kind of trying to push the limits of the fib sem uh, by doing uh, uh, measurements on some infiltrated cathodes. So these are cases, uh, in this example, where we start out with a porous background, which is the scapula nito of Syria. As you can see in the white here, 
Uh, and then we've actually infiltrated uh, LSCF, this lanthanum strontium iron cobalt oxide material in. And then using this uh, ESV detector, we can actually, as you can see, get some contrast between the infiltrated phase and, and the backbone phase. Uh, and of course, the challenge here is that we're getting these uh, particles are very small. They can be down to 50 nanometers, and we're kind of pushing the resolution limits. Uh, this is just the segmented image from the uh, same And finally, we've been looking a little bit at, at the battery structures, and just this is just a fly through of a positive electrode, lithium cobalt oxide, the kind of standard positive electrode in a uh, lithium ion battery. Okay. And this is actually an example where we're seeing only these lithium cobalt oxide uh, particles. Everything else was infiltrated with epoxy, which is why you get this uniform background. The, the, the one troubling thing with this is that uh, there's actually a lot of stuff in here. Okay, so an actual battery, this is filled with a liquid electrolyte, but there's also uh, some carbon black, which is in here to provide electrical contact, uh, and some binder materials, which kind of all blended with the uh, organic epoxy. So resolving that is going to be a, a challenge.